Good morning. I am Father Eugene speaking to you from Jerusalem, not far away from Damascus Gate. This is the site of a Colby Bleak and a beautiful basilica built in 1900s on the site of a great Byzantine basilica constructed by Empress Evdokia in 450 and dedicated to St. Stephen in 460. This is the traditional place of the Holy Archdeacon Stephen's martyrdom. We are a few years after the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The book of Acts, chapter 7, narrates the speech of St. Stephen, one of the first deacons of the emerging Christian Church, who brought testimony about the divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the end of the chapter, we notice the response from his contemporary, was death by stoning. St. Stephen was killed by his contemporaries because he brought this testimony. Chapter 8 in the book of Acts, verse 2, says, Sine commission den ton Stephanon andre silavis, ke pisan copeton megan e pafto. There are some devout people, however, who buried Stephen and made great lamentation for him. This is a very brief gloss, very enigmatic. We don't know who are these Andres Evlavis devout men who took the body of Stephen and buried him. We can imagine, just living in Israel today, that the righteous Jews will always respect the human remains and will take care of no piece of human flesh be left on the surface of the ground but rather being buried. One pious tradition says that these Andres Evlavis were two disciples of Christ but in secrecy. The tradition says that Gamaliel the Rabbi Gamaliel, the Pharisee Gamaliel, who had uh, sympathy for Christians according to the Book of Acts, and who was also the teacher of Saint Paul, the former Saul, who was trained in the Pharisaic tradition by Gamaliel I in Mishnah, one of the sacred collections of texts in Judaism, Gamaliel is portrayed like one of the highest sages of Israel. And Nicodemus, we know from the Gospel of John, was the disciple who came to Jesus and uh, asked different theological questions. So this pious tradition says that Gamaliel and Nicodemus came and took the lifeless body of Stephen and brought him to Beth Gamla, a village not far away from Jerusalem, where the Pharisee Gamaliel had a private property the tradition says that Gamaliel gave a decent burial to Stephen and he put his lifeless body in his own tomb. We see some similarity here with what happened with uh, Jesus Christ after death when Joseph of Arimathea came and offered his own family tomb 
to Jesus. Then we have an, another important date in August 415. Now we are just in the beginning of the Byzantine history. A priest by name Lucian, who was priest in Beth Gamla, had three consecutive dreams. And he dreamt in his dreams about an old man who came to him and introduced himself like Gamaliel. And Gamaliel said to Lucian the priest to go to a certain place to dig the ground and to take the body of St. Stephen because he was a saintly person. After he speaks to his bishop, John, the priest, Lucian, begins his digging work, and finally he finds a tomb containing four bodies. The body of Gamaliel, the body of Gamaliel's son, Sabibas, who converted to Christian faith and became a saint, the body of Nicodemus, and finally the perfume body of Saint Stephen. In December 415, by the care of Bishop John of Jerusalem, the remains of Saint Stephen's were brought to Jerusalem and deposited in the great church of Sion called the Church of the Holy Apostles. This church was famous in 5th century because it was located, was situated on the site where the upper room was located. The upper room is known from the Gospel and then from the tradition was the place where the Last Supper took place, where Jesus appeared on the first Sunday of Resurrection, when the Holy Spirit actually descended on the Apostles 50 days later after Jesus' Resurrection, and the same place where the Apostles uh, came back after said uh, farewell to their Lord on the Mount of Ascension. In 450, Empress Evdokia built a beautiful basilica on St. Stephen Martyric Death, the site of a Col Biblique today. The basilica was dedicated 10 years later in 460. One year later, Evdokia dies and she was buried in the basilica along with her daughter. It was her last will to be buried under the alley where the monks were going to the daily services. In 614, the Persians invade the Holy Land and the Basilica is completely destroyed. When in 18, late 1800s, the Dominican brothers came to the Holy Land to found the first Dominican community, they bought a piece of land not far away from the Damascus Gate, but they didn't know what kind of treasure land they bought. They actually they bought a slaughterhouse and turned this slaughterhouse in their little monastery. A few years later, Marie Joseph Lagrange, Père Lagrange, the founder of the Colbic Bleak, came to Jerusalem and he started the excavation work. A few years later, he found the intact remains of the halls, or the base, basement of the halls of the basilica, the Byzantine basilica. And with this help, actually, the Dominicans succeed to build their own basilica in 1900s, respecting exactly the size and the configuration of Evdokia's basilica. Per Lagrange 
this great figure who pretty soon will be beatified by the Roman Catholic Church, had a great idea to come to Jerusalem and to found the first biblical and archaeological school, which is a call biblic today. He wanted to combine written documents, archaeological evidence, and patristic and traditional interpretation of the Bible, all together put in the service of the Church and for the dissemination of the Word of God for the modern readers. I'm a proud alumnus of this famous biblical school. I was a student here in 1984-1988, and I took a Master in Biblical Science, working on my first doctoral dissertation on Hosea. Father Lagrange's legacy is still alive among the professoral body of Ecole Biblique, among the students, and I will see even in my own experience as a teacher and scholar, I try to combine the written documents, the Bible itself and its purity with the archaeological evidence and the patristic and liturgical interpretations of the Bible, all these together being put in the service of the modern reader.